it was a tight knit us child actors, you know, wasn't that huge of a group. So I usually knew the person who got it. It was a little yeah, clear. I, I said, I, you know, Katie Kurtzman. It was like, and there was like, people were in everything. All this. and the Shea brothers. How many? How many Shea brothers are there really? Is it Eric Shea, Eric right? Shea, uh -huh. Mike, Mike Shea, Michael Shea, oh, Michael, Michael, Michael Shea, yeah. Michael Shea, Eric Shea. We had a couple of them on Little House, and I remember it was, and it was Eric Shea who was on, was doing like Johnny Johnson, or and I remember it was my mother who said, "It's another Shea brother. Are they breeding them in the lab? Yeah. There's so always another Shea." <laughs> They said, Don't add water. Audition is a Shea. <laughs> they multiply. I did a film with Eric Shea and Katie Kurtzman, <clears throat> actually, now that you mentioned both those people. Yeah. <clears throat> it's called When Every Day Was the Fourth of July. Another huge. That was awesome. That was another one that was like, oh, I want to be that. Now, Katie, if you remember, so you, do you remember an actress named Pamela Ferdin? Oh, my God, yes. I mean, right? I, she that was like okay the people who i would go to auditions and go oh am i up against her i'm leaving pamela ferdin <laughs> and jody foster it's like oh well i'll just sure. go home because <clears throat> sure. they're <laughs> it's but like you lose the part to jody foster and you couldn't be mad right to watch okay, go, well yeah jody foster. yeah what was i gonna do yeah but, so, katie, but yeah pamela ferdin oh my god she was at everything yes yeah, love pamela. pamela ferdin and katie kurtzman were there were more but they were like the criers you they could on cue like i've seen it like wow you know we were just joking around oh well okay time to set up get up ready roll balling I, it's it's a skill i mean you know we all had to cry in our career you know our acting career well, I, I was on little house the great cry fest of all time yeah. like yeah. seven people cried per episode or something and it was interesting because we had people who were insta criers and then uh -huh. people who weren't, I, I, I'm not an Insta crier. I can, you know, go all method and you know, work something up for you, but yeah. it's just, but there were people who would like, oh, am I crying in the scene? Okay. And like the tears start rolling, like the, nothing is happening. Like, it's like suddenly, how are you doing that? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. they had a switch, like water to my, and, and then there were people who were like, okay, give me a minute. And then they had to cry. But yeah, the Insta criers are amazing. It's a specific yeah. skill. And some people just go, ah, and like stuff is pouring out of their face. I don't right. know. <laughs> well, everyone had uh, their own process and, you know, some would take longer than others. Speaking of criers and little house, I just spoke to uh, Matthew Laberto last night. Yes. Yeah. Albert. Yeah. He's awesome. And then yeah, he, he was a great crier. Man, I was going to say, he, he did a lot of crying on little. A fantastic crier. We had yeah. some of the best criers on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had a, a whole village full of crying and, and of course we had katie and katie that was when she was the stuttering girl and i tortured her and she right. cried a lot a lot in that episode i think that you were very mean to her i don't think you should have treated her that way i was really that's the episode the episode where i pick on katie for stuttering is the episode i call the uh, even i hate me episode <laughs> you know it was so awful. that's funny you know i uh mentioned this when i was at in the studio with you not long ago but like you were just I mean, you are such a good actor, and I was intimidated when I was doing an episode of Little House. Thinking, yeah, yeah, that's right. Everyone, he was in an episode of Little House and Highway to Heaven. It was the one where Ma almost cuts off her leg. It was that one. I mean, he wasn't yeah. there when she almost cut off her leg, but he's in that yeah. episode. But I was intimidated. Like you were that convincing. <laughs> and why isn't there? This is what I. This is what we need to do. There needs to be a where are they now type, not a where are they now, but a, a spinoff called Oh Nelly. Or, and it's, <laughs> it's just you. And where is she now? And who is she beating up now? And who is she buying out now? Right. My friends tease me about the how many where are they now shows. They're like, where are you not? You're on these where they're like, where are they? She's here. She's here. She's still here. And she's still right. here again. But I didn't mean where are like where are you now? I mean like where's right. Nelly? What where would Nelly be doing? Or, yeah. Yeah. And of course, that gets complicated because then you have the real Nelly that was three different people, and then she would be married to Henry Curry and living in Tillamook, Oregon. By the, right. So, yeah, the, the whole the, the historical line, and then the book line, and the TV plot line. It's like, ah, it gets like those weird comic books where they have multiple backstories. It's like one of those. Right, right. Ah, what a great show. What a yes, great yes, show. Yes, everybody who wasn't on, it's like, oh man, I wanted to be on that. Because, and well, it was good. Can I ask you, so I have a feeling, so you know, like Henry Winkler had a little role in Happy Days Early and then they're like, oh, whoa, 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 
get, mm-hmm. get in the writing room for this guy and let's let's bolster his character up. I feel yeah, like he walked on and they blew up. Story is when you came on that show, I don't know if you were just supposed to come in for one or two and be a bully or whatever, and they just kind of holy cow, we've got to get. Nelly Nelly was big in the books. In fact, it was an interesting thing when Laura wrote Banks of Plum Creek, and Nelly was a character in that and was very mean. She thought, okay, I'm good. And then we left Walnut Grove and Nellie's family left Walnut Grove and the English left Walnut Grove. I'm moving on. And then we go to South Dakota. She was getting letters going, what happened to Nellie? Can we have, we need more Nellie. She was like, oh my God. So luckily there was a terrible girl in the town in South Dakota, uh, Genevieve Masters. And she went, fine, I'm going to say that was Nellie, that Nellie just showed up there and all that stuff Genevieve did. I'll say that because people were clamoring for Nellie in the 1930s. So there was something about that character. And when I was signed, they said, oh yeah, you're signed for the seven years because you're Nellie and that's a regular thing with Laura. But she was, you know, she started, I mean, they took stuff from the books, like Town Party Country, but it was fairly awful. But they were like, okay, she's going to be about this awful and she's going to come and do this. And uh, I like to say, even at the time, I said, and now I fonzied the hell out of that. Um, I did. I came out and they said, okay, she's going to be this awful. And I went, well, what if, what if I was this awful? And I came out and I delivered and they went, oh. Oh, well, that, well, that's quite something. Well, hey, let's write an episode where this happened. Let's see what she does if we give her this. Okay, and then it became like a poker game. I'll see you and raise you. Until next thing you know, I'm going down a hill in a wheelchair. You know, and it's, right, it's, right. It, es- it was a war of escalation. <laughs> and, and and it worked out really well. But yeah, right. I, I took I kind of took it and ran with it and went yeah. bananas and it worked out. It really worked out. I had out. a feeling. I had a feeling that's what happened. You fonzied it. I did. Yeah. I was like, this is a really good character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, no, it's when you get that kind of thing, it is. It's like, oh man, I have I have struck gold here. Do you have a character that you did as an actor, child or adult, where you felt like, okay, I, this one I'm nailing it here. This is this is a character I'd like to be playing. Um I did, but you know, there were pilots that didn't sell like multi-camera sitcom pilots so many of the pilots like oh, yeah gonna be that? Mm-hmm. i there's one pilot i just loved the character i just wanted him to live i just wanted to be <laughs> with him for a good five seasons would have been nice yeah but um and then there's did other you, things i did that were what's that did you do the thing with auditions when i was a little kid because i started again going i think i was starting to go to auditions as a baby I think my whole family were working. So they were like, I was auditioning for stuff as an infant and I didn't get them. I did I like, ugh, I didn't start working until I was five, six years old and I didn't get steady work till 12. It was just terrible. But I was starting really, really early and I went to auditions all the time. And what I quickly found, because you go and no, you didn't get it. And you didn't get that one either. And, oh, you got this one, but you didn't get this one or this one or this one. And if you're going to how many, remember sometimes you'd be, get picked up after school and you'd have two or more auditions. You'd like get multiple auditions a week. You might have two in a day. Yes. I quickly learned, like by the time I was like seven or eight, and that's actors who didn't learn it till they were in their thirties. I literally, once I was done, I would walk out of the room and it was almost like it hadn't happened. Yeah. You just let I would, it like go. walk away. And people would go, how'd the audition go? And I go, I'm not really sure. Which one? Oh, that one. No, I completely forgot about it because if I remember them all, I will go insane. I will yeah. go clinically insane if I actually try to like hang on to all these auditions when it was that many. Well, of course. And and hopefully you learned this. It sounds like you did. You learned this early on is that. Um, so when you didn't get a role, sometimes it has nothing to do with your skill ability it's because they've already cast the mom and dad and they have different color hair or they just don't that's look that a much big like one. So that it's not a as, big one. as a child actor you can be brilliant in the family of brunettes yeah <laughs> and it's not as personal as we you want to take it at the time you know you're taller than the kid who's playing your older sister right right my my father, who was a manager, used to actually had a song he made. He would sit there and go, "You're too short, you're too tall, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too old, you're too young, you're too this, you're too that." And he would like sing that, "You're too this, you're too that," ha ha, and like laugh because he said that's what it is. He's like, yeah. "Oh, you don't look like the woman they cast as your mother." It's like you don't freaking know why. It's it's in yeah. Yeah, you could also somehow your look could remind them of somebody they know in their lives who they had a negative experience with and has nothing to do with you. Well, like, that oh. was that was in my early 20s like the the casting or the director's ex-girlfriend mm-hmm. like oops 
<laughs> yeah, you look like his ex-girlfriend. Bye. Out. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't want to be reminded of her the whole time we're shooting. So no, her. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always that's just a horror when that happens. But yeah, yeah. this is. A, and people who are in show business don't realize how insane and random things can be. You do your absolute best, but then it's like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much that's out of your hand. You, you, you prepare and do, yeah, give it your best shot, but not everything is uh, in your hands. You have to have a little uh, luck or, you know, it's got, it's got to be, you know, fate. Otherwise, you'll go crazy if you, if you you'll just. You'll burn yourself. You'll, you'll, <clears throat> your brain will explode. And then how did you transition to directing? Now, now when I do this thing, I always say this is sort of revenge for the thousands of times I've been interviewed since I was a small child. Now I get to interview people. Did you become <laughs> director? was like revenge. Now I get to, or was it just something like this? This is what I want to do. Yes. How did was, that come about? <clears throat> early on, I used to be so fascinated by whoever the director was. I would follow he or she around and just see what they're doing and why and i was i would i'd also fortunately i was cognizant not to like always like tap shoulders how come you didn't do that i, I just i'll just quietly i wouldn't ask questions you know until eventually when i got older they're like hey you want to know how this is done and i'm sure and i'd look through the lens and all that but um <clears throat> i was always so fascinated by the process and um you know i loved acting i loved <clears throat> finding the scene, you know, the arcs and the scene and all that stuff. And I realized at one point in my life, I can still do that without being in front of the camera, without being an actor. It's direct. Well, that's a convenient thing too, because as we also know with Hollywood, it's so insane. They suddenly decide, well, we've had enough of you or, well, we love you, but oh, are you over 40? Well, we've decided we don't want you over 40. Yeah. We liked you when you were 22. They, they they pick whatever it is. Your hair's another color. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, what else you got? And that's what directing is a handy thing because it uses all your skills and they don't bother you about what you look like. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and you could, um, especially non-location uh, jobs like a multi-camera sitcom or something like that, you can be 90 years old and sit in your chair and direct that, you know? So um, that's not why I went into it. But um, I, I see your point, though. You're right. Like it, all these considerations for actors are thrown out the window, you know? So I just I just kind of wanted to do it. I just felt it felt more it felt more interesting to me, even though acting is tremendously interesting. Just the whole process. I just wanted to be in the pool and, and find scenes and find characters, you know, find their way. And um, I, I love I love collaborating in that. So, yeah. So then, so is your approach to the director, and she said collaborating, because everybody has different approaches to the director, mm -hmm. you see it as a collaboration with the actors. Well, absolutely, because I don't think anyone has all, any one person has all the answers. And with any luck, you've surrounded yourself by very creative, talented people. Now, as a director, you're going to be the last one to go, okay, we're going to use that idea. You get to, you know, the whole thing. But um, I've always been a, a big believer in the best idea wins. You know, forget your ego. Let's work for the show. The better, the better scene, the better show, the better film, the whatever, you know, just work for the best product. So if an actor says, hey, what if, what if, what if she does this? And I'm like, oh, that's good. Yes. You know, we, we, you have to be approachable. You have to let them know ahead of time uh, you're a collaborator because so many uh, directors aren't and don't want to. No, they're just like, this is yeah. what we're doing. And that was, that's the nice thing is a lot, all the really good shows and movies, they are ones where if you have some fabulous idea, they might, let, like I said, Little House, if you brought something, if it was really good, you were discouraged from randomly ad living and going crazy. But if you threw something out and they went, wait, what, what was that? Oh, I like that. If it worked, like I said, Jonathan Gilbert was, you know, who played Willie was our greatest ad libber. All his ad libs wound up being kept because he would do stuff. And, you know, poor, poor Mary caught would be going, that's not in here. And Michael go, wait, what? Oh, I like it. Put it, write it down. What he said. <laughs> it's a, right. and the best one was I said, I'm smashing the dollhouse and Bunny, and he had one more line before he's supposed to run out of the room. And he didn't say it. He just fit, did this line, this line, and then he bolted. And Mary said, Dan, he, he had another line. Because Michael had gone like, oh, cut print. That was great. And he said, what do you mean he had another line? He looked at the script and he looked at John and he looked at the script and he looked at me and said, she was coming at me with that hairbrush. I don't think I'd have stayed around to say another line. I think I, I would have left. I, I think he's right. So those were always great. And you hear about like, well, Anthony Hopkins, when he, you know, did Hannibal Lecter, obviously, well, he uh -huh. had all, so he arrived with all sorts of ideas. He's like, could I be standing? Could I be doing this? What if my hair was this? And luckily the director was like, 
yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if someone has it and it's a good <clears> idea, <throat> you're like, yeah, run with it. Sure. Director's looking out over the whole product. And the actors, if they're any good, they're always looking, you know, at their character. So Mr. Hopkins probably thought of something that, you know, maybe didn't just cross the mind of the director, Jonathan Deming, I guess, uh, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to collaborate and, but you also have to be able to say, thanks, but no, I don't think so. You know, you have to be able to do that. And we had a lot of that on Little House too. Yeah, that's great. No, just do the thing in the script. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> bring it in people, you know, <laughs> a, a calm, a common expression would be, we're going to bank that idea. Like for, <laughs> Maybe we'll try that in another episode. We'll do. Now, did you, did you, in becoming a director, did you like say, well, I'm going to go back to school? Did you say, no, these are what I'm using? Did you uh, work with another director? How did you transition? I mean, there's people well, who go to film I, school and become <clears throat> directors. I mean, how did like you I've said, I've always paid attention. There's really no experience like experience. You just kind of got to somehow. No. And if you can get in there, it's a lucky, it's lucky. Um, I was doing a show, I was on a show for five seasons and I wasn't going to come back for the final season uh, or for the fifth season rather. And um, for various reasons, I wasn't one of those people who just leave a good job, you know? Um, and I ran into, um, at the time he was the, the associate producer of the show. I ran into him out in the world away from work. And he said, Hey, I hear you're not coming back for this season five. I said, yeah, my agent and I talked about it and maybe best. He's like, I really want you back. Is there anything, you know, we don't really have more money in the budget or anything. Is there any thing we can do to get you back? And I just on a whim just went, well, I'd love to direct the show. That would, that would, that would bring me back. And he's like, let me talk to them. So um, that's how it happened. It was a series of phone calls after that back and forth. Uh-oh, you're muted. Where's my glasses? I don't know. Does that mean no? I'm having trouble hearing you, Allison. Did you go mute? Can you hear me? Because I can't. I can hear you now. Oh, okay, I can... now you're back. Every it was really weird. It just suddenly I didn't touch anything. It went it mute. It sometimes the wind blows and then yeah. it goes mute. But that's that's mm. yeah. There are actors. I mean, that's how Michael Landon started. He was on Bonanza. Like, oh, maybe I could direct an episode. Right. And... Right. Yeah, it was lucky. It was a lucky thing for me. It was the right time um, for me because um, they wanted me back, which was really, really flattering and all that. So, yeah. So I directed an episode of that and that got me to the DGA and then I went on. Which show was that? Which did you start directing this, on? This was a Disney Channel show called Kids Incorporated where. Oh, um, Kids Incorporated. Yeah, yeah. So it was Fergie and Mario Lopez and Jennifer Love Hewitt and um martika and a bunch of bunch of sweet people yeah but i, I wasn't a, it, it, it was a children's show but i was the only grown-up on the show i was running i was kind of like arnold from happy days or um <laughs> the, the mr belding from uh say by the bell like i was the you know, you know the one with the moral of the story at the end you know, and the, the you know <clears throat> delivering the message but um, yeah, so um, that happened. And then I, I, I just went in just doing my own thing, short films and stuff. And then I directed Reba and then a pilot called The Peacemaker. And uh, I did a full season of a show on Comedy Central. Nice. And yeah, and some, some various other things. And I'm gonna be doing, I'm going to Toronto to, to direct an episode of this new Netflix show. Going to Toronto? Are you allowed to say what the show is? A lot of yeah. Well, it has a working title. I wonder if I could okay. say the working title. I don't. Or it's, yes, because they're secret. A lot of them. Yeah, it's a it's okay. a supernatural thing. Cool. It has to do with fangs, but um, I'm also superstitious. I if if it's not fully in ink, you know, I'm like <laughs> not till the film is in the can, as we used to say. Yeah, not yeah, until yeah. the check. The film is in the can and the check clears. It's, it's, it's yeah, exactly. It's a done yeah. deal, but it's really never done until you actually wrap the final day. You know, on the screen, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so bad, and then you're directing theater, which is marvelous. And now, of course, theater in LA is a whole weird scene. We talked about that. That like mm -hmm. theater in LA, it's not like theater in New York. 
because people do theater in LA and go, oh, well, I got a real job. I have to leave. Right, <laughs> right, right. Right. I know it's, it's, I love theater. I just love doing theater, you know, um, done a bunch of plays and doing one right now, or we're, we're almost, uh, we're three weeks or away from finishing this one. Right. Um, this is the incredible, the whole Archie and Mahitable thing, which mm -hmm. I, we had you on for with the gang there because it was amazing. And, and I did see it after I got the interview and loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. But I'm, I'm, as I said, a big Archie and Mahitable nerd who's like actually into yeah. that. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and thank you for coming to opening night. But even if you weren't an Archie and Mahitable fan, you probably would have been there just to see Carolyn Hennessy. Because, right, because Harold Hennessy eating a mouse and Jeff, oh, yeah, and, um, yeah, among other things, and and well, of course, also uh, the, um, the, the, um, the lightning, but your lightning bug, oh, Richard, Richard your, Horvitz, yeah, Horvitz and lightning great. bug, and then uh, was it Kelly who's the fly Kelly, and Kelly rat? Stables, yeah, what is, but okay, so, and then Bill Cotton, of course, Dan Gilbazan, who's uh, created this adaptation of Don Marquis's work and as one of the stars, uh, the main star basically of this. As, as the cockroach, as Archie. You know, there, I actually, I was trying to think, there's a couple moments where, wait, wait, he reminds me of someone and it was in the quiet moments. There was actually a weird Robin Williams kind of vibe going on. Oh, from Dan? Yeah. I could and see not that. not like wacky Robin Williams, like quiet Robin Williams. Yeah, I could see that. I could see how he kind of, he kind of looks like him. Yeah, 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 there was totally like I went. This is like a weird Robin Williams, but oh, I, that's that vibe I'm getting. It was, yeah. it was just amazing. It was, I mean, the collection of people, but everyone was just absolutely full out off the charts craziness. It was, yeah. It was I mean, if anyone uh, directs theater or anything, I highly uh, suggest surrounding yourself by really talented actors because it made it so much better and so much easier. Yeah, um, yeah, they're just. Uh, Especially Richard. Richard's, uh, he's kooky. Like, he is <laughs> off the charts nuts uh, in a great way. Yeah, I was like, just, I was like sobbing hilarious stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I just loved it so much. Now, there was talk, talk, loose talk of it getting extended because you've only mm -hmm. got, what, three more? You have like this Saturday, you have like three, three more, more shows, and maybe yeah. hoping. Yeah, there's a little chatter about um, getting extended because ticket sales are good. We're full and, you know, we only have three more houses, so we, and you know, the producers telling me they have more people who want to see it than what's available. That's so how shows get extended. That's, that's how, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't extend when you don't have a. There's no demand. For <laughs> no, no, that would be that would be awesome because it's it's a great show and everyone in it is just so good. That would be lovely. Thank you. But um, well, you, you've directed a bunch of theater. I saw you got Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in there. Mm -hmm. You did your Tennessee Williams stint. Was that yeah, awesome? I made my dues for the Tennessee Williams thing. Yeah, we did that. Tennessee Williams. Yeah, that, that one I was really proud of. Um, again, you get good people. Get good people. Because once that curtain goes up, you may have directed the whole thing. But now you got to sit back and trust and watch. Right, the stuff. They're running loose and you're just backstage and you can't stop them. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're just hoping they apply everything we worked on in front of the audience, you know. But uh, yeah, we'd, uh, let's see, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and uh, God of Carnage and uh, Lend Me a Tenor and um, Hound of the Baskervilles. And I have, I, I love theater. I, I love all those sh uh, plays. Yeah. I love the originals, though. Even though I did Tennessee Williams and God of Carnage and all that, um, this current one is, a ri I love an original piece. I'm a yeah, little more interested. The original in that. one's great. Now, do you find what is what would you say? Because everyone was asked the, the difference between directing TV or film versus directing theater. I mean, they asked all those actors that. What do you find is different in directing it? Do you find there's a difference? Um, there's definitely uh, a lot of differences. Well, for one, you know, we can put a microphone right here under your, you know, so you can kind of play it right here. In the theater, there's people who pay full price to sit up at that back row, you know. So there's unless uh, you're on Broadway and mic to the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. In regular yeah. LA theater, it's going to be high. You're going to project like mm. the old days. But it's still even even there. You know, there's it's a on Broadway. It's a huge house, so the delivery is more expressive. So it can read throughout the house as opposed to underplayed. You know, on camera, which is right here. So, um, but but let's just say, for instance, the because um, I love comedy. I love doing comedies. 
the, the there really is little or no difference between a um, sitcom and a comedic piece of theater. As far as funny's funny if it's done right, no matter where you're at. Whether they're right. I mean, that's right. Sitcoms, a three camera sitcom, is done like a play. You have a studio it audience, etc. So, and that's why so many theater back in back in the olden days, in the sixties mm -hmm. and seventies, we'd watch sitcoms. Half the people who would hope be the leads player would be someone from Broadway. Yeah, you know, you might have yeah. people from TV, people from TV and people from movies didn't cross over much, but you had all these Broadway stars who would come out to LA and get a three camera sitcom because it was like doing a play. Right. Well. um, it's funny you said that. Yes, absolutely. And um, I remember working, I was, when I was an actor, I was directed by the, the great late Bonnie Franklin. Um, exactly one day, who I was yeah. thinking of, Bonnie oh, yeah. Franklin coming in and doing one day at a time. Exactly. Well, she would always say, you know, after the break was over, so, okay, let's go work on our play. You know, we're doing a TV show. She would always call it a play. It's a play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she was good. She was very good. Yeah, she would know. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Oh, so, this is a spot. So what else do you have? You have, have Toronto. You have a something spooky for Netflix. We can't say what it is. Yay. Love that. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe, maybe the cockroach and the alley cat are getting extended here. We don't know. We don't yes. know. But that could be very cool. What else? Do you have more plays coming up? What do you got? Well, I uh, looks like I'll also be doing a Hallmark movie. One of those romantic. Uh... Oh, what a, is it one of the like the Christmas things? It, oh. This one is not a Christmas thing. Oh, not but I mean, it, but it's like it's a Hallmark movie, you know. It's, so it's kind of the same. Warm, warm and co cozy and safe, happy so ending. Person visits a small town, decides to stay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Have you seen there's a thing? There's a thing online like create your own Hallmark movie, and it's like six plots and five characters. Yeah. Just like with the rest. It usually ends up with her falling in love with the barista with a heart of gold, as opposed to the rich. Black you know. shirt and the muscles. She ditches yeah. the born guy in the city, gets the earthy, good country man. And yeah, with yeah. A big yeah. heart. Yeah. When, at, at Christmas, um, we go to Bob's family's place uh, in Tennessee. And downstairs, there's like two TVs going, and one has Lifetime and one has Hallmark with all the Christmas movies. Just gone, like 24 hours. So you sort of wander around the house and go, wait, have I seen this one? <laughs> like, big well, which one? <laughs> you, you probably have, even if you haven't. <laughs> Yeah, they're kind I of, I there's a nice niche for those, those movies though. I mean, people, people love them. They're still, how many have they done? I mean, who know, for years they've been doing well, this. I don't know. And then sometimes you do that thing, they'll do Christmas in July and just start running them around the year and stuff. Oh, do they? Run them, they'll <laughs> run them randomly through the year. They'll say, and this week is Christmas. Like, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I, I watch them. You know, when it's Christmas, I'm hanging out and I'm going, oh, see which one are we watching tonight? And you do, you start, you get caught up in it and go, oh, I know this one. Oh, yes. Oh, and the jingle bells. No, and yeah. they lost the reindeer. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the end of the the end of the show, the tree lights up, and the families are holding their and then they all hug and everything. But that's and a, 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 thing, and a lot of know? sweaters and yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a fair amount of violence and craziness going on, so it's that's a nice balance. There's plenty of that. So yeah, you can get the killing on one channel and the hallmark on the other. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm watching Dahmer right now. Are you with our friend? with michael learned okay but and yeah. mrs walton as grandma she, and she great. talked about that when she said i thought about what i would do if one of my children or grandchildren said said oops i've killed someone it's like what 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 would i do would i mean i i would think none of my children would do that but i guess everyone thinks that and probably his grandmother right. thought that too and oops what do you do when you just realize your grandchild i mom? know i know first of all i'm only in uh episode four so he kills people you, you're gonna spoil it with me like that a little bit, little no, bit. she's great yeah. she's, she's really great. yeah she's great also bill cod who's in my play right now is in this Oh my God! He's he's yeah, but okay, yeah, yeah, okay. he's um, like down the road in episode eight, I think he said. Okay. Yeah. I and mean, it's interesting because they've done a. I mean, it's a thing. It's, it's obviously yes. There's also things about they're disturbing, but they've also kind of shown for people who weren't there at the time that how this the number of times the police crossed paths with him <sighs> and went, "Oh yeah, have a good night," and yeah. and missed the chance to stop him. And it's how so frustrating like, were ignored, and now this sort of gives a little voice to some of these other people who tried to yeah. stop him. It's, it's you know, so 
as ghastly you know, as it is, there's that. I know you're watching it going, take him in now. Like he, he was good. You know, he got pulled over, you know, get him, oh, get him in, you know, think about how many lives would have been saved, you know, right. horrible. But, um, but if you can detach yourself from that and just kind of enjoy the performances and it is a, a real life story. So, you know, I hear uh, it is just brilliant. I hear everyone in it. It's just really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. Dark. You won't see that on the Hallmark Channel. No, no. And that's the thing. I'm like, I'm both. I will watch stuff that is just so dark and disturbing and terrible. And then I like, I want, and then I want my cartoons. And then I yeah. want like the Hallmark. And I want both. I want to be able to have both. I want to have one channel where it's like, oh, and it's an autopsy show. What are we that? And then I want another channel where it's like, look, butterflies. I want, I want there to be all of these things. <laughs> Yeah, you need a glass of milk to smooth out all that. Other. <laughs> nice, cozy, friendly, lovable show. Yeah. Now, where do people where do people um find you if they want? Because I said you're not Mister Giant Social Media dude. No, I don't know if you remember. Or Facebook. Was, uh, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. I I I mean, I have an Instagram account and and Twitter, but I'm I honestly like I've intentionally since I don't really promote myself or I just kind of, and I raise, I'm raising my son. And I just thought a while back, I'm like, I'm just going to like. Yeah. I looked just like he posted several years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, he's not on here. Like, well, yeah. cause I feel like it's just a rabbit hole. I'm going to fall down you know, and I'm going to be like spending a lot of time where um, I could have learned to speak French in the time I spent on Instagram. Or you, your IMDB, they can read all about you on your IMDB and mm -hmm. see what you're doing and they can see you on Facebook and yeah. and you will tell us on Facebook when you know the names of all of your movies when you're allowed to say that that they're happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. I will. Um, let's see. Um, no, I'm not going to toy with it. There's. I. Let's just say the word "fang" is in the title. Okay. Okay. We'll just okay, let's go with that. Yeah. Go with that. But um, well, yeah. I'm I am looking forward to it. And the next thing, amazingly, it is like I think we have like a minute and a half left. I can't right. believe that just like blew by there. That's massive. Um, I just, I just loved everything you do. And um, yes, yeah. obviously I love the, the play. That's what well, you saw. It was like, I didn't even call you. I just started promoting going, Hey, you know, Moosey is directing this show. That's <laughs> like, that was so exciting. So let me ask you real quick, since you have a little bit of time. Um, so you're going off to do some theater. Are you allowed to talk about that? I think so. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be heading to North Carolina. I guess it. Well, I suppose it was when you, as I say, check clears, except not filming the can. Um, I guess you know when I'm I'm boarding the plane. But yes, I'm back. I'm back on stage. We're back on stage. Um, I have a bunch of weird stuff coming up. I mean, I'm doing a couple of the autography things, but there's actually a couple of theatrical extravaganzas over the next few months that maybe may be happening including in la we don't know yet and uh, then but yes i i it looks like i will be off to north carolina probably to be british and evil um but there you are <laughs> you play evil you're not going to be evil evil i guess i but i'm good at it i like that i like i enjoy that but it was so refreshing to grow up and meet you and now know you you know for the years i've known you now and like oh my god you're like one of the sweetest people and i was legitimately intimidated I, so, but yeah. I did I did a play years ago and the guy who was popping in the play before we could like start rehearsing he's like we have to talk because he was a couple years younger than me and he said you were like a big girl who could have beaten me up and I was terrified of you when I was like nine so <laughs> he yeah. had to like officially meet me and not be terrified anymore so we could go on with the scene yeah I I don't know for me if it was the beat me up thing it was more it was worse it was like she'll humiliate me there's that. Like, there's that. <laughs> Who's this new kid on our show this week? Who's what's your name? Moosey? What kind of name is that? And I could have, I could have you know, been like that. Like when guests came on the show. So think you can guest on our show. Can you imagine if I'd been like that? Like, right. That would have been so weird. Yeah. yeah Welcome yeah. wagon. I was like, Oh, hi. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Funny. Um, but, um, well, we didn't get to do a scene together when I was on Little House. No, I know we did not get to be in the thing. You were, you were, you were one of those like poor people's little boys. Yes, yeah. lived in shacks. One of the shacks. Well, the I lived in the shack with my dad and returned the Ingalls cow. You, you returned a cow. And the thing is, people who are diehard fans are going, "Oh my God, yes, the kid who returned the cow." 
They're like, <laughs> really? right away. They're like, oh, is he the one? Somebody actually said, is he the one who did such and such, or is he the one who returned the cow on my Facebook when I said you're coming on? Yes. Is he wow, the one who returned the cow? That it was such a small guest role. That's crazy. People, they do. They pay attention to these things. Well, you are fabulous. Thank Thanks you again. Awesome. I've now I can say I've had you on, I guess, one and one and a um a fifth time because yes. we had you were shared with the others. And then, then I finally got through to have you on because yes, your just told career has been fabulous and fascinating. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank and you, Allison. This is the Allison Argram show, and I'm Allison Argram, and thank you, Moosey Dreyer. Thank you. Woo!